Hello and welcome. This video is all about introducing the different types of film formats to you and what their pros and cons are. The reason I wanted to make this video is to help anyone who might be new to film photography or who wants to get into film photography and isn't sure what format they should try out first. Most cameras only work with one type of film, with a few exceptions of course, but more on that later. When you get started with film photography, most of you might already have one of these lying around somewhere at home, which is a compact camera. Or you have something more intricate, which is um, a camera that has an interchangeable lens. That just means you can take off the lens and change it. And these cameras usually work with 35mm film. 35mm film is the film that's most common nowadays, and it's also the easiest to use. It usually comes in these kind of canisters, and you either have 36 or 24 exposures with it. A good thing about 35mm film is that it's usually good value for money. Depending on what kind of film you're buying, whether it's color film, black or white film, a roll can cost you anything between 4 to 20 euros. If you process your films yourself and you scan them yourself or you work in the darkroom like I do, from a 35mm negative you can get decent sized prints up to anything to like A3, A2, even bigger. And here's even an example of me making a very huge print uh, that was something like a meter wide uh, in the darkroom from a 35mm negative. A few problems that you might encounter with 35mm film is that sometimes a small format like 35mm is actually not enough for you to really get high yielding results if you want a lot of resolution from the film. Also, if you develop your own film, sometimes you could get into trouble developing 35mm negatives if you do things like stand development, basically where the film sits in the developing tank for very long. You can get streaking on the negatives by uneven development because of the sprocket holes that the film has. The next film I'm going to mention is medium format film, and it looks like this. Now you can see it's quite a step up uh, in terms of surface area from a 35mm film roll. A common mistake that happens a lot is that a lot of people think it's actually called 120mm film, and that's actually not right. Now medium format film comes in two different lengths, 120 and 220. Depending on what camera you are using, both 120 and 220 film make the same photographs. Just that a 220 roll is bigger or longer than a 120 roll and therefore yields more frames. See it this way. Before when I was talking about one of these 35mm rolls, I mentioned some of them come in 24 or 36 exposures. It's the same thing with the medium format rolls. Um, they either come in 120 or 220. Depending on what kind of camera you're using, medium format film will give you different frame sizes, even though you are using exactly the same film. One of the most common frame sizes for medium format is the 6x6, which is something you have in the Rolleiflex or in the Hasselblad. This will give you a 6x6 cm frame, even though some cameras will give you different frame sizes. So a Pentax 6x7 will give you a 6x7 cm frame. Or if you have one of these, which is a bit smaller, it's a Mamiya 645, it'll give you a 645 frame. And then there's things like 6x8, 6x9, and even super crazy things like 6x17. Essentially what this means is that on a 120 roll of film, a 6x6 frame will give you 12 exposures, and a 6x7 will only give you 10 and a 6x9, even less with 8, and so on and so forth. Some of the advantages of medium format film is that the area exposed is actually much bigger and therefore you will have a much higher resolution. This means that there is a lot more detail and in fact something like a 6x6 frame is nearly 3 to 4 times bigger than a 35mm frame. Also in terms of depth of field you just have so much more room to work with and the effects that you can achieve with a small aperture or a very large aperture are much greater. Usually medium format cameras are a step up in size compared to 35mm cameras, but ones like these are still relatively compact and easy to carry around. A practical downside of medium format film is that 12 or 8 frames sometimes just might not be enough, so you have to be very selective with your picture taking. Also, the way the film is 
wound onto these spools can sometimes be tricky to work with, especially if you know, you're working outside in the cold or you have sticky fingers or something. Um, it can be quite difficult to get these loaded into the camera properly. I would say medium format is a really good combination between um, usability in terms of how many frames you have and the quality of the negative size that you can work with. And now onto the final format, which is large format film. Large format film, or also called sheet film, is the largest film available to consumers. It comes in all sorts of different sizes and most commonly in 4x5 inch, 5x7 inch or 8x10 inch. Even though there are also really crazy sizes like 20x24 inch, which is just mental. Sheet film comes, as the name suggests, as separate sheets. These films are used in large format cameras and large format cameras are unique and very technical. They allow for extreme adjustments in terms of depth of field and perspective and because of the characteristics of the camera, they allow a lot of control over the final image. One advantage of large format films is usually the amount of resolution that you're going to get on one of these compared to a 35mm frame. If done correctly, a properly exposed 8x10 inch negative will allow you to probably print on the side of a building. The main and only real downside of large format film is that it's extremely expensive to buy and sometimes it can also be tricky to get it developed um, depending on what kind of labs you have access to or if you have all the right equipment for developing large format film yourself if you're doing it at home. Now right at the beginning of the video I mentioned that you could use different film formats uh, for different cameras that aren't native to them. So one of the things that's very common is using something like a medium format camera or a large format camera and using it with Polaroid film. So with a special film back what you do is you insert a Polaroid film that is adapted um, to work with large format and if you wanted to for example take a photo of a specific scene and you weren't sure how it was going to look like because you know back in the day there was no digital photography the fastest way to get um, a working image that you could actually see, especially no, to know what kind of light situation you have and all those things, uh, you'd use a Polaroid film. And then you have things like Polaroid backs that you could put onto a medium format camera and make a Polaroid photo with a medium format camera or with a large format camera. Another thing that you can do is you can take one of these uh, 35 millimeter rolls and buy a special adapter that fits on the top here and it'll turn it into the size of a medium format roll and that means that you can use a 35 millimeter film in a medium format camera which is also kind of cool especially because it really exposes the entire area of the film. So just before wrapping up this video I just wanted to mention that I teach all of this in more detail on my Skillshare classes and I have a link below that will give you one month free access to them and you can cancel anytime of course. So once again thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you a bit of insight into the different types of film formats. Uh, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you like this video or if you have any more questions about film formats or anything else. Take care. Bye.